Did you know one in six children face some kind of mental health concern each year? And help is too often in short supply, especially in rural parts of Idaho. This Thursday, September 26, Boise State Public Radio is holding a special event in Marsing to talk about rural mental health issues, and we'd like to invite you to come, especially if you or someone you know lives or works in Owyhee or Canyon Counties. The event is free and open to the public, and dinner will be provided. So meet us at Marsing High School this Thursday, September 26, from 6 to 8 p.m. for an important panel conversation on building connections between teens, families, and their support networks. Find event details at boisestatepublicradio.org slash events. From Boise State Public Radio, this is The Connector. It's Idaho's Daily News. Good morning. I'm George Prentice. This morning, we will tell you about a significant change in the weather. We'll preview how Idaho is poised to commemorate 9-11. Plus, we've got a preview of Boise Pride coming up this weekend. And of course, the latest on the Firewatch. It's Tuesday, September 10th. Here's what's making news today. A significant cold front is moving toward the region, and by this time tomorrow, temperatures will begin dropping, and there is a major threat along with this new weather system, especially at higher elevations and particularly on the scene of some of the region's wildfires. Spencer Tangent is at the National Weather Service office. Up in the mountains, we're expecting some higher rainfall totals, upwards of a half inch as possible, especially where some of the fires are burning. And one threat that will accompany the rain, especially if we get thunderstorms, is the threat of uh, flash flooding and debris flows on some of the recent burn scars that we're seeing um, from the fires this year. So that's going to be a threat we're going to monitor as the system comes in. It's just the threat of heavy rain producing flash flood and, and a debris flow risk. And again, that system begins to push in beginning Wednesday. Temperatures drop about 15 degrees on Wednesday, another 15 on Thursday. A number of Idaho communities, along with much of the rest of the nation, is set to commemorate the 23rd anniversary of 9-11 tomorrow. James Dawson reports on how communities are honoring the nearly 3,000 lives lost in the terrorist attack. Tomorrow morning's remembrance will begin at 6.46 a.m. at the military camp just south of Cascade. Wildland firefighters in the U.S. Army will observe six minutes of silence the moment the first hijacked plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Carrie Green is a spokesperson for the U.S. Forest Service in Cascade. We want to pay tribute to the victims and their families, and we want to help foster a sense of solidarity and demonstrate a commitment to prevent future acts of terrorism. Officials canceled a planned walk to commemorate the attack's victims due to unhealthy air conditions and ongoing evacuation orders. The veteran-focused nonprofit Mission 43 and the Katherine Albertson Foundation are holding a 5K run along the Boise Greenbelt beginning at 5 p.m. with food and beer vendors on site. And Twin Falls is unveiling a giant flag to fly over the Snake River Canyon. City officials in the Twin Falls Chamber of Commerce will unfurl the flag beginning at 6 p.m. with an Air Force flyover and a 21-gun salute followed by music at the Visitor Center. James Dawson... Boise State Public Radio News. This coming weekend will be the return of Boise Pride, this year marking its 35th anniversary. And while it does attract thousands of people to the downtown core, it is quite an economic engine. Core, we contribute back approximately somewhere between one to two million dollars over that weekend to local businesses. This is Joseph Kibbe, vice president of Boise Pride, presenting to the city of Boise special events team. Those new to the area may wonder why Boise Pride is in September when most of the rest of the world celebrates Pride Month in June. Organizers here say they want to include local college students. We're able to better engage with Boise State and the CWI students. Um, that gives them a chance to participate. And another interesting note, Boise Pride is now the second largest Pride Festival in the Pacific Northwest region. It starts Friday and runs through Sunday. The lava fire threatening both Gem and Valley Counties continues to see rapid growth it has so far scorched nearly 47,000 acres. It is 0% contained. Andy Neesmith is with Great Basin Team 5. The inversion lifted, which allowed that smoke to pick out 
Um, and that's what's been holding a lot of the fire activity down. And when that, when that lifted, our fire activity rose with it. And when that inversion lifted, wildfires in the region, particularly the lava fire, intensified. If this cap comes off, that's when you get the radiant heating from the sun, and that's when things just take off. And this is Valley County Sheriff Kevin Kapiri briefing Valley County commissioners on Monday. He said, yes, firefighters are working around the clock. That said, at night, especially on the ground, it may become difficult to determine where one fire ends and another begins. At nighttime, it is so hard to pinpoint them and where they're at because you don't have any landmarks. So the whole hour that they're going, is that Deer Creek or is that you trying to figure out where it is because you have no landmarks, it's just dark other than this fire up there. As for the next few days, he says weather-wise, there's a big change in store. Yeah, not a lot of sleep for the next few days. Uh, Wednesday, we're supposed to get uh, really high humidity, maybe some rain. So we're going to keep watching it. We're going to keep working it. Now over to the huge Wapatee fire, which has scorched more than 120,000 acres. There are nearly 1,500 firefighters on the scene. James Norville is with Planning Operations. He says, yes, there is some progress at the Wapatee. You can see there's a lot of containment um, moving up on the east side of the fire. Uh, those crews and resources are working um, hard to pull a lot of that structure um, protection equipment out of the neighborhoods, getting people back in, as well as uh, we move the roadblock up to Stanley Lake cutoff. Um, so you can uh, access uh, a little bit further to the north before you run into uh, fire suppression activities. And as of this morning, the Wapatee is 12% contained. We are told that there may well be critical fire weather today due to high temperatures and winds. Starting tomorrow, a strong change to the weather pattern. That means cooler temperatures and some rain. That's some good news, but high winds, not such good news. That is today's episode of The Connector. I'm George Prentice. We'll see you back here on Wednesday to stay in touch with the news between now and then. Check out boisestatepublicradio.org or download the free Boise State Public Radio app. Thanks for listening.